Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm a Hatch Educator and today we're going to make this cute little mug rug in Hatch and this is a design from the Ultimate Stash and I'll leave, I'll let you guys know what it is. I did a blog on it earlier this week so you might want to go and look it up. There's some great pictures of the stitching out but for this video I want to talk about creating it. So let's deconstruct it. This is the finished design so let's start and we'll just do it right beside it. Let's start and I'll show you guys how quick and easy this is to do. So let's go to digitize let's twirl it down and all we want to do is make a square and uh, I'll just guess at that and we don't want it filled in we want it to be an outline really easy single stitch let's move things over so you can see the new one now I can see that's not quite the right size and the easiest way to make it perfectly square is to go up here and type five by five and we'll take that off there and let's go five by five hit enter now we have a perfect square you can round the quarters if you want that would kind of give it a nice effect I just left mine square because I was in a hurry to make it and it's much easier so what we want to do is copy and paste this square actually for my rhythm my mug rug making rhythm I do the first one the placement always in blue and the tack down always in red and then I can it makes it easier for me to do you don't have to stitch them out in red or blue of course but to me it just makes it easier so let's use some shortcuts Let's go control C for copy while I have this selected. Control V for placement. Let's scroll down here a little bit. I'm gonna make this one red. And I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller. It just helps a little bit. So instead of five, we're gonna try 4.8. And let's do this one because I separated it. So 4.8, let's see. That's probably good. You could probably do 4.9. Let's look at that. We just want it to be a smidge smaller. And if you don't like to make it smaller, heck, you don't have to. I just find that they come out a little bit nicer this way. So there we have the two squares. Now the first one, of course, like I said, it's blue. So that's the placement. So as you're creating this in Hatch, remember to think about your steps so you don't miss them. And even if you do, when you're test stitching it out, you can do it in. So the first step is the placement. So we know where we're gonna place our fabric and our batting. So we've got our placement, we've got our tack down, and that's for the outside. And you're gonna place down your batting and your fabric. Make sure you live, leave a nice seam allowance on it. You don't cut yourself too short. You'd never wanna do like two of them on one hoop because you wouldn't have enough seam allowance in between them. So let's go, we've already copied, so let's do another paste, Control V. And we're gonna do the inside part. So we want another placement. Now we have it selected. We want another placement and we wanna do it about 3.8, maybe even smaller. I think a little bit smaller. Depends what you like, depends what you're gonna put on the inside. I think it looks really nice with a little border around here because the way I like to do this one is I have the center part with a different fabric and I like that. You don't have to do it that way. You can just skip this part and just have it like that. So that fits, that's fine. So that's the placement, um, kind of. What we wanna do once we have this all sewn out and you can make this the, the same color, then we wanna trim this part out and then we want to place down a fabric uh, you know, I did white because I thought it looked cool or gray. I guess I did on mine. I'll bring up a picture so I can remember. And uh, so we want to do a copy, control C, control V, and we're actually almost done. What I'm going to do, this is going to be the tack down. We want it to be nice and tidy. So we're going to make this one red because we got to remember our color changes. So that's for the center piece. We've already done this just perfectly. Cut it out, center piece zigzag you can adjust the settings if you want i found it worked perfectly this way um, and then we're going to do control v again 
and this one we're going to do in the colors that show. So we want this one to be probably orange because I had orange material. We want to change it to either a satin um, and make it a little bit wider probably. Or I used a motif and I thought it looked really cute with the motif. The only thing you have to make sure is that the motif is big enough to cover the majority of the zigzag stitches. Now you can see they show through a little bit and what I would do in this case is make the circles a little bit bigger or make this one orange and so they won't show. But pick a motif, it has to pretty much be a satin stitch one um, and it will look great. It will look great. And then all I did was bring in this design. I'm not going to move it over because we have one more step to do. So this is the order that we're doing it in. And so we've got this all set up and it looks beautiful. Then we want it to stitch whatever design. You can do some lettering with some ESA fonts. You can personalize it. You can turn the lettering sideways and make it fit into the square. It's going to look awesome. We have one more step to do and we're going to take the outside one and we're going to do control C and control V and it automatically puts it in the bottom and that's fine and I'm going to change it to a weird color because this one's different and this is your last thing before this one stitches out you want to take it off and you want to do your folded fabrics as I outlined in the blog and then this is going to stitch and hold everything together so for this one I want something a little stronger so I'm going to use a back stitch and you could even go over it twice if you wanted to just keep it as a single run have it go over twice the back stitch is usually strong enough so either way so that's your back track or repeat um, don't need it for the back stitch and we have a different color to make sure it'll stop and that is how you make a simple pattern for a mug rug. Now you could change the size, you can make it longer, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can make it a rectangle, you can turn it around and go through these steps and you can make your own mug rug quickly and easily. You can change the colors and make a Christmas one. You, like I said, you can add lettering, but that's how easy it is to do here inside Hatch Embroidery Software. If you can draw a square, you can make a mug rug, and that's, that's it. I'd like everyone to try it and let me know how you guys make out. Um, if you want something to print out, you can go to the blog at Digitizing Made easy and there's a lot of pictures of the sew out and step by step so now you have the creation in hatch and you have how to sew it out so hopefully I'm gonna see a lot of good mug rugs in the group thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video